Hello, my friends. Hello. Today's guest is a very special guest, a very normal single mum who returned to R after a 30 year break. At the age of 17, she was told that she was not good enough to be an artist and stopped drawing. How many here have heard that before? I wonder. Returning back to art, I think it was back in 2016, she's now a flourishing artist who is booked up for commissions and also has a membership with thousands of people learning to draw realistically using coloured pencil. A massive welcome to a very, very, very good friend of mine, Bonnie Snowden. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. What a lovely intro. Oh, I was getting excited. I'm like, who's this person? Can't wait to speak to her. Who's she bringing on? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, honestly, I can't wait for this session um, because what we've just read there is really the tip of the iceberg. And I say Bonnie's a good friend. We we literally only met, but I feel like I've known you all my life. But we only met last year, didn't we? In kind of yes. summer last year yeah. um, through a mastermind that we're both in. And, you know, when you just hit it off with people and Bonnie is just such a down-to-earth, genuine human being who wants to give back to others. And so that's why I wanted to bring Bonnie in today because she has the most incredible story to share with you. So thank you for taking time out of your day to join us, Bonnie. Oh, no, a ple absolute pleasure. I, I can't think of anything nicer to be sit sitting here and, and chatting to you. I'm, I'm very excited. Slums and giggles. Grab, grab your drinks, everybody. And, and I hear that all of your... Okay, some of your members are tuning in as well with biscuits of course yeah, so yeah. <laughs> I think then so shall we step back to that moment back when you were 17 when you were told that you weren't good enough to be an artist and how that yeah. must have felt and what yeah what art played in your life at that point yeah yeah so I um I left school at 15 um I went to a grammar school in Ripon and um, highly academic, had to have extra, <laughs> extra, extra lessons to get me in. And I am, um, and I got in, and I got in on the top 5% with these extra lessons. And then I didn't, didn't really work uh, again. But art was something that I absolutely loved. Um, so always kind of doodling on my school books and all of that kind of stuff and drawing horses and, and everything. So at the age of 15, I left and I went to my local college in Harrogate um, to do a general art and design course, which was sort of like the precursor to a foundation. So, you know, when you go on to do a, like a foundation course and you go to university or to polytechnics back then. Um, yeah. And so I had two years of doing general art and design and you kind of did printmaking you did screen printing you did um there was some watercolor there was sculpture there was all of that kind of stuff photography um and I have to say I absolutely hated it <laughs> I hated it we had to and I did learn quite a lot but we had to draw big everything was big everything was you know like huge rolls of um you know it's almost like drawing on toilet paper with charcoal and and it, it was just not not me at all and it I don't think it's what I expected um in hindsight I probably would have been better to go on and do sort of like an illustration course or something like that but this just wasn't what I expected the tutors were mean like downright mean I remember my, one of my tutors she was called Alice and she looked like I didn't see any of her art at all didn't see her drawing didn't see her do, doing anything but she just sort of um you know waltzed around she had all of this hair and she always had paint brushes in her hair and everything but I didn't <laughs> see her paint at all I didn't see her do anything um, and she was really scary and what we had to do at the end of it we had to then um, obviously try and get into university to do a foundations or whatever and I decided I was wanted to do graphic design and I'd gone and I'd viewed all of these different places and the, my favorite one was Preston um, and I really wanted to get into Preston. And I remember coming home one day, I'd applied, I'd gone, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to be amazing. And I came home and I got this letter through. And my mum, in her excitement, had already opened it. Um, 
<laughs> and I came, I can remember kind of getting home, walking sort of up the drive, and she came out and she said, Oh, we've you've heard from Preston. And she said, you know, you didn't you didn't get in. And I was like, Oh, you're joking, aren't you? You're joking. She was like, No. And the letter basically said that I didn't have the skills, I didn't you know, I didn't have what it would take to become uh, an artist. And that that was that. Mm. And I felt absolutely gutted because I'd kind of put myself into that position of being at art school, mm. of learning that this is what I was going to do. I was so excited that I was going to be doing it. And then all of a sudden, no. And, you know, I did another, they got me an interview at Leeds. And I remember going to Leeds and I suppose I come from quite a, 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 a well-to-do family. And my mum was like, right, you have to do this. You have to wear a, a suit. You have to look really good for your interview. And I walked in and they just took one look at me. And, and honestly, I think they probably laughed at me, you know, and they were like, I, they were quite derogatory, really, which was which was really sad. Mm. And they took oh um you know they said oh how have you got here I said oh I've, I've driven and then they said something like oh you've come in mummy's car have you <gasps> no yeah. oh my god yeah. and you know when and I was like well no actually it, well it probably was my mother's car actually <laughs> but you know it was <laughs> a, you should, yeah it was almost like that feel yeah. of um, who you know somebody going to art school has come from a, a, a certain background and that was kind of what it was and I wasn't the sort of person I was almost seen as as too privileged to be able to to go on and do this and anyway so I didn't get in anywhere and I'm not surprised because my portfolio was pretty rubbish um so my dad got me a job at a local advertising company that he knew the the two brothers that that owned this advertising company and he got me a job as a tea girl <laughs> so at 17 I started making tea <laughs> for accounting sex um but it was actually amazing because they had the whole studio in there they were doing all of I'm quite old now and back then they didn't have computers and stuff like well they did have computers but not like they have now um so everything was done by hand so I learned how to do paste up by hand you know where you you have the the, the big typesetting machine that looked like a huge bus. Wow. All of the typefaces were on these big sort of great big belts that you sort yeah. of had to put in, and then it whizzed round, and then you typed code in wow. to get your length, to get your font size, to get your you know your line spacing, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. So I learned the art of uh, paste up, and also a little bit of typesetting. And I was just saying um, to Lucy this morning, when I was 17, when I was working for this job, I had appendicitis and I had to I had to have my appendix out. And in the three weeks that I had off, I taught myself to type. So then I became their typesetter. And then I went into typesetting after that. And, and I was basically in graphic design typesetting where I wanted to be, but in industry rather than at university. Yeah. Um, so I can't. Yeah. And that's that's what I did ever since. But since that day of kind of being told you're not good enough, um, I stopped drawing. Oh, wow. So you were drawing before that. And were, were you drawing with pencil or was it something different that you were doing back then? Well, as a, as well a it was sort of, I suppose at school it was those weird powder paints that they you know, yeah. the box where you kind of <laughs> just a slap in it everywhere. They never have any decent stuff at school. I don't know whether it's changed now, but they had really rubbish stuff. And everyone fighting over the brushes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a toilet brush and it's got like three strands in it. Um, <laughs> it's right. um, so everything was like with paint. So I never used colour pencils. I'd never used colour pencils before. I'd maybe done felt tips or, you know, it was always things like paint. And and then, of course, when I got into the uh, working for graphic design and, and all of that kind of stuff, it then was all on computer. So I learned how to use Photoshop. Well, back then it was freehand. If anybody's as old as me, it was freehand and page maker. Wow. <laughs> really <showing> my age. <laughs> Um, and so were you in the same role where the the role evolved as technology evolved is that what happened or were you changing 
in the same field with different employers did you did you yeah, no, so basically I went from uh, working for this advertising company I think I worked there for nearly a year yeah then I went to work for um it was a big company that had all sorts of it it was avant typesetting avant design avant signs avant print they had all of these different sort of um you know branches streams if you like and i went to work for avant typesetting and and i just i became a typesetter so basically back then people would come with a design that they'd drawn out on paper mm -hmm. and i would take that design that they'd drawn out on paper and i would put it into a digital format um and i was really good at it like everything was it's really weird when i think back now and i think about how how chaotic i am how messy i am i mean you know i think everybody's seen my kitchen table it's just completely full of clothes it's just yeah and but the work that i did was pristine the work that i did was uh, measured to the you know nearest millimeter everything yeah. was you know it was perfect Precise and absolutely yeah. Place, measured everything was measured properly everything yeah. fit yeah. um and and I think that's why I love my color pencil so much yeah I was yeah. gonna say I wondered if that influences the work that you're doing now and so so you kind of stayed in that role and then still not making art but you're in a creative role um and I guess that's where your voice was developing and you've got this kind of like pristineness and accuracy being important and control in the work that you're creating and then at what point then did the art come back into your life? Um, so it wasn't until 2016. Such a big break. So that was a, a 30, 30, year, 30 break. year break. Yeah. 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 And it wasn't until 2016 when things were starting to get a little bit shaky at home. Um, work was quite stressful. I was at that point then a qualified business coach and exec coach. And I was working um, in the UK, but I was also working overseas yeah. in the Middle East, which was absolutely brilliant. And I really loved it. Um, but it was quite it was quite stressful. I had I think I had my eldest was going through GCSEs, I think, at the time. And I needed something to kind of help me feel better. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and and I'd heard about this, um, and it was quite. A, I think this, I mean, it's still really big now, but back then it was really quite big. Uh, coloring books, coloring books for mindfulness, and I was very much into my mindful and all of that kind of stuff because with the coaching, yeah. and my daughter had asked me what I wanted for Christmas, twenty fifteen, and I said I want a coloring book and I want some coloring pencils. That's what I want, and I'm going to start doing this coloring mindfulness stuff and that's what I'm going to do so I opened my present on Christmas morning and Christmas was always uh, from that not always but from a from a point any anything that meant we were a family at home all together was stressful you know mm -hmm. couldn't really sit and sort of um get excited about all of the presents and everything because <laughs> there'd be somebody there with a bin bag <laughs> oh, really? you know all of that kind of stuff yeah, and, there, was and it, there was a lot of stress there was a lot of strain uh, uh, as well between um you know my, my ex-husband and me yeah. um and so this I opened this present and it was just honestly I, I sit and think about it now and and you think how can something so almost insignificant have had mm -hmm. such a ridiculously amazing impact on mm -hmm. on me on, on one person H yeah. how can that have happened anyway I opened it and it was this um it was the little book of little book of mindful coloring yeah and uh and a and a set of I think it was 12 WH Smith pencils and all I did on Christmas day was sit and color and I think I got to the I got to sort of Boxing Day, and it became very clear to me that these pencils maybe weren't the the, the best pencils that I could use. So then I start all of my research and everything. <laughs> I spent my Christmas money on a tin with something like maybe seventy two, I think, of the Caran d'Ache Prismalo, which are sort of like their. Um, then it's like an entry level student grade 
you know, pencil, but you can also do watercolor and everything with them. And the, the difference between those and the WH Smith was like, you know, stratospheric. It was, they were so pigmented, they were so lovely. And then all I did in my spare time, which I didn't actually have very much of, you know, when people say, oh, I haven't got time for that. My life, so I worked full time, I had three children, I was married at that point, I had a dog, I also had horses. So I'd be out early in the morning, sorting the horses out, getting the children to school, getting to work, and then coming back, sorting the children, sorting the horses. Mm -hmm. So I really, I didn't not have time, but I had a very full schedule, if you like. Yeah. But I felt, I really felt the need to prioritise just this creativity that was coming out. And what I found was, you know, rather than just sort of like colouring all of the, the bits and pieces in, um, I found that I was like um, sort of blending one colour to another. I was, you know, uh, really looking at how I could make these almost like my own, not just sort of colouring bits in. And and it was amazing. And I sat there and I'd be colouring and all of the horribleness that was going on in my life just gone. Dissolved. Yeah. Dissolved. Oh, yeah. Isn't and you could just take take yourself away because I know when you've described before when you're doing your pencil work now you're just kind of in that zone that zone where everything else around you is dissolved and so I guess that was taking you out at that point yeah. and so so Christmas no one got to see you because you were coloring <laughs> you were it. and I could I, I just I giggle at that as well about going off and researching because who here would do that? You know, and you just find something and you just go and research it and research it. And it, I love that though, when you find something that you connect with and it's like, oh, right, I want to learn everything about this now. And so at what time period then, what followed after that? So you discovered pencils and was it just pencils that you yeah. were creating with? You didn't have anything else going on. It was just like right. pencil is your tool, your medium. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and with me, you know, once I find something, I kind of go all out on it. Yeah, but not into. I've got like my blinkers on. I'm like this. Yeah, is what I'm doing. and I think it was March, and a friend of mine had said, um, "You're really good at drawing, aren't you?" Because she'd seen my coloring in. Um, she said, "You're really good at drawing. Um, you know, will you draw my father's the the family dog? Because you know, she's poorly. We don't think she's got very long left to do. Blah blah blah." And I was like, well, I'm not sure. And um, anyway, I decided that I would do it. But I was too, I'd been using colour pencils all the time, but I was too scared to draw this dog in colour. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just did it in pencil in, in, in graphite. Um, and she absolutely loved it. And I put it up onto my Facebook, uh, you know, just my personal Facebook. And I got all these people saying, oh, will you draw mine? Will you draw mine? Will you draw mine? And and I was really excited right from the beginning. I was sharing my coloured pencil, you know, the the the, the colouring book stuff. And I was always really excited about it. And that's one thing that I've always done is just be, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know whether you get this, but if I'm really excited about something, my expectation is that everybody else is going to be really excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So I'm putting stuff on social media and there's no me thinking, oh, people aren't going to like this or people are going to think this is rubbish. They're going to think it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love that about you, Bonnie. I love it. Do you, do you think that's, sorry to interrupt, but I was just wondering, is that a trait that's always been in you or do you think that came from the mindset work when you became a coach? Um, it's, always, it's always been in yeah. me. I think. Just I have no, um, I, yeah, I just think... <laughs> A great skill to have, isn't it? I was just wondering. Well, it's, it's, it is. Um, yeah. um, I mean, there there are there are, there's always sort of like a, a downside to it, and yeah. and I do think with all of the coaching and uh, stuff that I I learned about and then I continue to have, um, I've been much more reflective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's not that I think that that I'm the best and whatever I put out there, it's always the best. I'm always reflecting on, um you know certain things but but definitely with my drawings I, I'm always really excited yeah. really excited to share the stuff yeah, yeah that's great yeah. Yeah. and so you were so you were at that point so you got that first that first person I'm just trying to paint the picture of where you were at that point so you just had a personal profile on Facebook you hadn't set anything up no yet for specifically for your art so you were very much still doing this personally someone yeah. had seen it 
then you shared it on your personal Facebook. Uh, and then I'm just really interested as well about that fear at that moment, because I, I would imagine lots of people relate with that first drawing that you had to create. Um, at what point did you think, yeah, this is great? <laughs> you know, when you when you were going through that process, having returned to it after a long break and you've gone from the colouring, what was that process like of, you know, did it just come out of you and, and did it work or was there some trial and error? What was going on at that with that piece? So once I'd done the that first dog mm -hmm. for, for Sarah and her family um, and I was asked to draw other people's animals and I was asked to draw a horse that was at the livery yard where I kept my horse and I drew it and I was so flipping proud of it. I was so proud of it um, and I shared it. And I shared this actually not, not so long ago, a couple of weeks ago, because it came up in my memories. I shared it on my Facebook and it was, um, do you want me to see if I can find a picture of it and then you can see oh, yeah, it? Yeah, that'd be great. That would be great. Yeah. And anybody tuning into the podcast will put a picture of it underneath so you can see it. So that was it. Oh, that was the first one. Yes. I remember seeing that on social media so was, recently. Yeah. So that was the first one that I did. And I posted it and I was so happy. I was like, this is amazing. I'm really happy with it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I got some really lovely comments. And then one friend put, oh, it's really, and I put, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just loving shading, blah, blah, blah. And one friend put, I think you should put some bone structure in there and some veinage and actually do a few more details. And I can remember sitting there going, how on, why, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you critique my drawing I think it's wonderful and, uh, and I can remember like replying to her and saying uh something like oh I'm not interested in realism I'm not interested in anything like that yeah. um I'm just like doing this sort of sketchy look and then and and, and this is something that that is in with, within me as well I have a tendency to jump in and do the whatever I'm going to do and then sit back and and then reflect on it and then I reflected on what she said and I was like huh maybe she's right <laughs> you know you know when you get that critique and it kind of hits hard and it makes you feel really sad it's usually yeah. because the person who's critiqued it is right yeah um, yeah, yeah. And it's and if it hits a nerve as well, that says a lot about us as people, doesn't it? You know, if it, if it triggers you in some way, makes you feel there's something then there, isn't there? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Anyway, so the next drawing that I did, I included all of the veins and everything. In fact, I don't know whether I've got that one here as well. Oh, yes, I have. That was the second, the one I did after that first one. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And so how did you go through that process of learning that, those techniques? Because it's a big jump, isn't it, from you probably just working quite intuitively to then really paying attention to what you can actually see. Yeah. Because I would imagine that's a lot what a lot of people struggle with when they're yes. trying to draw yeah. what so they see. It was a it was a case of I'm going to try and draw this as realistically as I can. Yeah. And I'm going to put everything in there. So at that point, this sounds really naive. But at this point, 2016, March, I didn't even realise that people were sharing stuff on um, YouTube. I didn't even realise there were things such as Facebook groups. I, d I didn't even know there was such a thing because I, I wasn't in that world. I got a Facebook yeah. profile, but I wasn't yeah. in that world. Um, mm -hmm. So I didn't, I wasn't told what, I wasn't helped, I wasn't, nothing. Mm -hmm. It was just... I had a vision in my head of what I wanted it to look like and I drew it. Because back to, in 2016 too, it was a very different world online to yes. what we live in now. Completely oh, different, gosh. wasn't it? Yeah. So I understand yes. that. Yeah. Um, so no, so it wasn't, it wasn't like I'd kind of gone and done a, you know, a tutorial mm. or anything. Do you know, I really wish I had known mm. because mm. I mean, my, my, uh, I, I guess my, um, development was quite quick but I wish I had known because I think I would have learned a lot more about like color mixing and all of that kind of stuff I got an idea of color mixing because I worked in the print world yeah you know and I and I knew 
you know, this colour and this colour makes this colour and all of that kind mm. of stuff. But it's, mm. it's every medium is different. Every medium has got their, their little sort of nuances of, you know, how you do this and how you do that. And it yeah. was only until I'd, I'd, I'd then realised there were groups that I could be part of, so I joined some groups. And it was only until there was one artist who offered um, critiques via her um, YouTube, and she was like, just post a picture in the comments and I'll do a quick critique. And this was an amazing coloured uh, pencil artist called Lisa Clough. So she goes from, uh, her her art name is uh, Lacry Fine Art. Um, and I loved her and I still love her because she's bonkers. <laughs> we all like someone who's bonkers, don't we? <laughs> and her colour pencil work was amazing. And I put one of my pieces in for her to critique. And she was so complimentary about it and she was so lovely. And then one of the things that she picked up on was if you'd have just used a complimentary colour in your shadows, your shadows would be much more deep and realistic. And that was like, and I was like, oh my goodness, I've never heard that before. So pick that up and started to use complimentary colours in my shadows. It made such a massive difference. Um, you know, and that was probably 2017, I think. Um, wow. you know, but um and that's what's exciting about you having your membership. So I know that I can see there's loads of your members here tuning in saying what a joy it is to learn from you and learn these things. Because, you know, if you do want to draw with pencil, by the way, check Bonnie out. She's got an amazing membership teaching all of this that she's learned over the over the years. But, do you know, going back to the story of where you were at that moment, Bonnie, I guess there's loads of people here wondering how you were juggling all of that going on in your life with yeah your job you you were in a in, in a relationship that was that was really stressful on you and your family um and so how were you managing that at that point and finding that time to to learn yeah so i think i'm i'm actually really good at prioritizing what i think feels good for me if something feels good i'm i want to do more of it yeah and the drawing felt good it felt really good, yeah. um, you know, cleared my mind, all of that kind of stuff. And I did sacrifice some sleep. <laughs> I'll be completely honest, I sacrificed my sleep a little bit. <laughs> and I stole, you know, from I stole time from the end of the day and I stole time from the beginning of the day. So I yeah. stayed up later. And I got up earlier. I'm not saying that's something that people should do because um, sleep is incredibly important. But at the time, you know, I'd find myself sort of sitting there at two o'clock in the morning, just not wanting to not wanting to go to bed because I didn't want to go to bed. Yeah. Um, you know, because I didn't particularly want to be, you know, with my husband um, and not wanting to go to bed because I just was loving what I was doing. And I think for a short period of time, it, it worked. I stopped doing some things. <laughs> it's probably, it was probably the catalyst of my husband leaving, actually. <laughs> um, but I stopped doing things like ironing. <laughs> I'm really sorry, but I am, you know, I'd spend like four hours or something on a Sunday ironing. And then you put it away and it's creased again. So what's the point? Yeah. yeah. And I haven't ironed anything since. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I don't iron too. <laughs> I am not. I am not. Anyway, so that saved me like four hours on a Sunday. Yeah, it's um, a lot of time, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, things like, um, you know, I come home and I just slump in front of the telly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I stopped doing, I just watched, a, you know, something on a, well, I didn't even watch something on my iPad, to be honest, because all at that, at that point, I only had my phone. Mm -hmm. so I'd just be, I'd have my picture on my phone and I'd just be drawing. I maybe have the radio on. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of what kept me company. But that, yeah. Uh, you know, and I just, I think I've, I realized that need in me that I had, this was something I had to do because yeah. it was making me feel so much better inside. Yeah. I couldn't not do it. I guess there was that mindset piece of how you felt, but also, I don't know whether this happened for you, but when you produce something as well at the same time, so it's got this double whammy effect, hasn't it, of I'm feeling great, but look at this, <laughs> like you've produced something. And also, you know, the, the affirmations that were coming from Facebook, you yeah. know, at that point, I, um, I didn't have Instagram, 
Um, I didn't set up my own Facebook. I think it was September time. I think it was September time I set up my... In 2017? Uh, 2016, I set up a okay. Tony Snowden um, art or something. I don't yeah. know. So um, did you start then with the commissions from Friends? Is that how it began? Yeah. 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 And then and then I started posting in groups. So I'd maybe post a horse in like a, a dressage group or a show jumping group or something like that. And funnily enough, there'd be quite a lot of people posting their drawings in the groups. But I think naturally, because I'd kind of worked in that in the design industry and there was some marketing and everything in there, I kind of knew that I had to post my stuff but not sell. Mm -hmm. So there was that sort of subliminal selling, if you like. Yeah, yeah. This is the thing I've done. I've never, this is the only the third one I've done. What do you think about it? Yeah. And yeah. then, of course, you get all of these people going, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. Can you draw one for me? So there was no, I do commissions. Because if you if, if you do that, nobody, nobody likes to be sold to. And they just don't, no. you know, respond. Um, so I got so many commissions from it. And of course, I was charging forty pounds back then. Yeah, because I was still working full time and and all yeah. of that kind of thing. And um, and it, the affirmations from Facebook, people telling you all of this lovely stuff, mm. it was amazing. Yeah, you know, particularly and when you know, in, in my marriage, that that wasn't happening, and, mm -hmm. and it, I was being told the opposite. Um, but that was that was really nice, and that really spurred me on. I wanted to do. I wanted more of that. I'm a real people pleaser anyway, and I want. I want yeah, to yeah. No, well, it feels nice. I, yeah. I and how were you feeling in your job at that point? Because you've got a full time job at this point, haven't you? So what was going on in there in your job? Yeah. So I actually, I actually left the coaching company in uh, the July. They'd, they'd wanted somebody to be overseas, and I couldn't. I couldn't with my children doing schooling and everything. So I left, and I was working at um, a gallery. I became a um, an art. I don't know what the title was, but I worked for a big um, commercial gallery and selling art, which was amazing. You know, I was like, I was, I'm, I'm doing art now. I'm an artist. I'm going to, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and it was absolutely brilliant. And I was really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I was selling, I sold a, um, I sold a, uh, no, I sold a Lowry um, limited edition print that was one of the big sales that I did. I sold quite a few big originals that were like about 30,000. I was really good because I love people and I was just chatting yeah. with them and all of this kind of stuff. And they hired me because I was very different to the normal people that they hire. They normally hire, I guess, sort of a, a certain look and my look wasn't their look. <laughs> <laughs> but I did have to wear one of the one of the things that we had to do was we had to wear a full face of makeup every day. Oh, what? That's <laughs> yeah. I guess I heels, and I was like, I am not wearing heels. I'll just break my leg. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was working there, and that because it was uh, retail, I ended up having to work weekends as well. And it, I, I really liked it. I really liked it, but it. And I didn't, I couldn't really see what I was going to do in the future. And actually a full-time artist, me being a full-time artist, hadn't really occurred to me. Had so it not? Like, either the, then, yeah. You know, into the back end of 2016, it hadn't even occurred to me. And it was only when I was on the, I was, I was coming from work and I was going to meet my sister at the train station, one of my many sisters. And we were going on to Leeds to meet um, another sister and um, cousins and it was on the train. She was saying, oh, you know, uh, your art's amazing, you know, and, uh, you, you know, we, Charlie, her husband and I really think that, you know, you should you should go full time. But we haven't really said anything because we know how much you love your job at the gallery. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I don't really love my job at the gallery. I mean, it's fine, but I hated they made you sit in a in a cupboard and call people every day. Oh, I've seen people. You were she, like yeah so we are behind you every step of the way if you want to be a full-time artist we think you would be amazing and you know we will if you need help we will back you and we think you should do it and I was like oh my goodness oh. they ran their own business um and I was like yeah uh, yeah 
amazing. I'm, I want to do this. I want to do this. And um, Charlie, my, my brother-in-law, helped me put a business uh, plan together. And um, they went with me to the bank. Honestly, it was like I was like this little girl or whatever. But, you know, 40, 46 I was. And they went with me to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was so funny. Um, yeah. And they, you know, he, he kind of helped me uh, put a forecast together and all of that kind of stuff. And 1st of January 2017, I became a full time artist. Wow. So uh, can you just we need to pause for one minute and just reflect on that. So from a 30 year break, being given a gift on Christmas Day to 12 months, maybe just a little bit longer than 12 months, was it after you Probably. became? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I think so many people are like, wow, this is so inspiring. Um, and so that shift to go, I, I, what I love about that is someone else believing in you and giving you that idea and mm -hmm. and it, it's probably amazing to all of us isn't it to think that you couldn't see that yourself and it just took someone else to go why don't you do this and you go well oh yeah <laughs> and to have that support around you I think that's what oh God, makes you, yeah. gives you the confidence to take those steps do you know and that's that's really important and I know from uh, you know with 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 my community I know many people have fantastic support but I also know many people don't yeah um and the support I've I've always had support from my family always um you know and that has made a big difference because if, if you've got somebody there cheering you on saying you can do this you know you, you you're brilliant you're whatever yeah and you're gonna believe it aren't you yeah yeah it's what it's what's needed and that's why we've got communities isn't it Bonnie you know to be around people and constantly like we talk on a daily basis we're always kind of reinforcing this belief and the excitement that we have for what we do because yeah. it spurs us to take the steps the big yeah. steps so yeah. so you set up then your full time so did you give your notice in at the at the gallery and yeah, take the, so, the job um, the transition? I think it was October was it November I can't remember. I think it was November. I, I handed my notice in. Yeah. And my last day was New Year's Eve. Oh, wow. What a great start <laughs> to the next year. And literally, the next morning, I'm like, mm. <laughs> I'm a full time artist. <laughs> so, at that point, had you got commissions in ready? Or, you know, where were you sitting at that point financially as well? Because you've got a family. And so, what, what was the yeah. feeling around that? So, sort of throughout 2016 I was giving giving portraits away because I was just loving drawing them then yeah. then I decided I was going to uh, charge uh, you know a nominal amount so that I could buy some more pencils and paper whatever when I made the decision to go full time which was um 26 uh, uh, October I then and and speaking to Charlie he was saying you know you cannot make a living in doing portraits for 40 pounds yeah you, you just can't do it so anyone we okay, listen now sorry to interrupt anyone listening in now write that down <laughs> I'm not making a living. um so what i did was i i when i became full time i upped them at that point i think i was i think i was charging 75 and 120 or something like that so i upped it to 200 pounds my smallest piece was 200 pounds and of course i was getting better and better um and it seems like a massive leap but it, it kind of wasn't that massive and to be honest I didn't even and this is another thing and it's so important to understand that belief is everything I never for one moment didn't believe that people would pay 200 mm -hmm. I didn't for one minute think that. And because we'd had this plan, I made this plan that I would take it from 200 pounds and in my first year would up the um, the portrait to 500. Yeah, that was your goal. Yeah, that was my goal. And Charlie kind of coached me through that. And he was like, you know, what you want to be doing is, you want, and when it was 500, I was like, oh, I'm not sure anybody's going to pay 500. But I was like, no, I'll, 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 I'll believe it. Yeah, <laughs> Do yeah. something like believe it. Um, and he was saying, you know, what you want to be doing is fewer for more. Yeah. Um, and and I had all sorts of other things. So in my business plan, I had things like art shows, galleries. You know, you know, when yeah. you think about being a full time artist, I need all of this other stuff. Prints. Teaching was was big. 
I knew mm. I always wanted to teach because that's what I kind of done in my coaching role. I taught mm. leadership and management. I taught people to become coaches and I ran workshops, you know, around the leadership space and, and absolutely loved it. Mm. Absolutely loved it. I can remember <laughs> I was working with a big telecoms company in Bahrain and we were doing something on motivation. And I was like, you have to, you as a group have to motivate me to do 10 press ups. <laughs> <laughs> they all had to come up with, you know, how are we going to get her to do these press ups? <laughs> One guy that got me to do it was, I'll do it with you, Bonnie. We'll both do it together. And I was like, oh, you are, yeah. Oh. I'm doing my 10 press ups. Um, <laughs> yeah yeah you know so it was it was it was very much about that uh, that belief and and really really believe it and that's what I did in that first year I grew it there was another thing that I did which was so helpful and any color pencil artists on here you'll know that I've spoken about this before and you'll you'll know her anyway Anne Kohlberg so she has a magazine called color She's got this ankolberg.com. She's the most amazing color pencil artist. And she at the time had this brilliant course called, I think it was called Shine. And it was a webinar. And you basically sat there and you listened to what she was saying. I don't, I'm not sure there were any, I can't remember whether it was a video or whatever, but I listened to what she was saying. And she basically said, you increase your prices on a regular basis as you fill your commission books because she was a commissioned artist. Yeah. She said, you know, once you've got two months for it, two months books full, whether that's one portrait a month, at that point I was doing nine. Wow. It's not sustainable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at that point I wasn't really doing any marketing. And then as course yeah. as my business grew, I didn't have that space of time to be able to draw that much. But yeah. as soon as you've got two months full, increase your prices. Two months through again, increase your prices. And if you increase your prices by a smallish amount, say you're paying, say it's two hundred pounds you're selling your portrait for, yeah. and you up it after two months to two hundred and fifty, somebody who's going to pay two hundred is always going to buy it for two hundred and fifty. Mm -hmm. Then yeah. you go from two fifty to maybe three twenty five. Yeah, it's not a massive step, and they're still going to be able to pay it. And that's how you can get your prices, um, and you can increase them over a short space of time. One of the biggest traps I see people doing is they book a full year of portraits at £100 a portrait. Yeah. Full year. Okay. I've got a full year. Can't take any more portraits. £100. Capping their, their income. But how much? I mean, if they're, if, they're doing, if they're doing four portraits a month yeah. at £100, yeah. that's £400 a month. Fantastic. That's... What is that over 12 months? 4,000? Yeah. <laughs> Bonnie and I can't do maths. <laughs> but... It's not a lot. Ask me. It's not a lot of money, is it? It's not. But oh. do you know what I love about your strategy as well is that um, it's like what Stu teaches us, isn't it? You know, if you're going to put your prices up, you go back to your audience and you say, my prices are going up next month. If you've been sitting thinking about putting an order in, now is the time. Yeah. Yeah, because the, so it's a, a strategy that just yeah. continually brings those people that are sitting on the fence in too. Yeah. And and I remember you saying, Bonnie, that you um, you've always worked to a wait list as well. Can you speak on that? Because I think that's really great advice for people too. Yeah, that you... within the I think within the first um, the first year or definitely the second year, I went on to a wait list because I was yeah. getting so many people booking their portraits in it became a little bit overwhelming. You know, you've got their deposit and you've got like two years worth of portraits booked in and you're like, mm. the other thing as well, of course, is, you know, how, how can I put my prices up if, you know, if they're, if they're continually full? So yeah. I started the wait list. So I closed my commissions and I started a wait list. Yeah. Probably. And now I, that's one of the biggest things I've done. You know, if you look at, I'm not comparing myself to anybody, but if you look at place, things like, Rolex you can't yeah. buy a Rolex watch you have to join a wait list yeah and then when, when when a spot comes up to buy one it's there and mm -hmm. it creates this a sort of um you know this this need this yeah. you know, expectation and, yeah. and I'm yeah. not comparing myself to Rolex at all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am <laughs> Um, but it really does create that urgency then. Um, you know, it's, an, it's another marketing ploy, which I didn't realise was a marketing ploy, but it but it is. Yeah, 
yeah. it just works well for me because it means I can just do a couple of and now it works a couple of days yeah. we send an email out we fill the slots that's it that's super and so you where were your where were the majority of your commissions coming from at this point was it just organically from your own page and conversing in groups and them exactly. yeah yeah and, and I want to say that you know, I can see some of the comments here, um, you know, what happens if you start off and you don't sell? How do you move mm -hmm. forward? All of that kind of stuff. Increasing the demand is, is the difficult bit. Um, out, the algorithm change, we know how the algorithm changes all of the time. And I'm not saying when I started it was easier. Mm -hmm. um, it, it wasn't. I had to put a lot of time and effort and work and everything into it. Um, I think for me, if something's not working, you have to change. You can't, you can't sit there and go, oh, it's not working. And then <laughs> go, on, go on threads at the moment. Oh my goodness, I need to come off threads. Go on threads. Oh, the algorithm is awful. Nothing's working. <laughs> but, you know, you can have your two minutes of doom and gloom, but then it's yeah. like, right, I need to get off my bottom and I need to work out how it is going to work. Do I need yeah. to do a, um, you know, do I need to do a, a a course in social media? Do I need to look at my content? Do I need to do a, social, a course in, um, uh, you know, writing? What is it that isn't working? Let me do some research. What's working for other people? Well, this this person's doing really well, and they're doing this, 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 and this. What happens if I do something similar but in in my way? Um, and I think there's there's a um, a lot of us artists who are really quite scared of change also quite scared of showing up mm -hmm. um, you know you see so many artists on social media who look glamorous and they've got all the hair and they're all made up and they're sitting there in front of their canvas I could never be like that and sometimes I think there is a bit of jealousy on my part because I'm like you know I'm now very round and and 50 odd um so I just show up as me because, yeah. you know, what you're trying to do on social media is to find your community, find your people. Mm. And to find your people, you have to be you. You have to be who you are. And that means, you know, showing up warts and all, if you like me. Mm. <laughs> you know, but being you and your content needs to have you in it it has to be it has to appeal to your people who who have your same vibe who have your same values all of that kind of stuff and that's what I did really well yeah I didn't yeah. I didn't know I was doing it but I did it really well and I always showed up excited mm -hmm. telling a story and again you know I'm learning now oh it's all about storytelling I've always done storytelling you just did it you did it naturally yeah um, but storytelling is what pulls people in and it gets people going, oh, yeah, oh, I was like that. Or, oh, gosh, you know. And, and the other thing that I found, even when I wasn't teaching, I was giving hints. Um, you know, I'd, I'd post something. I'd say, oh, I've done it this way or I've done it this way. And, oh, I found this really useful. or Oh, gosh, this didn't work. Um, and just my my, um, my way of being on social media is very much how I am in real life. It's just chatty. It's mm -hmm. just, you know um and yeah and I show up like this I mean I've actually made an effort today I don't know whether you can tell <laughs> you, you look lovely yes <laughs> I've got some high heels on <laughs> no <laughs> I've got some weird trousers because <laughs> my favorite jeans are in the wash I've got these weird jeans that are about three inches too short <laughs> I've got odd socks on. <laughs> oh, I love odd socks. I don't, I don't ever wear paired socks anymore. <laughs> they went with the ironing days. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And so um, this is just incredible. I, it, and I can see so many people tuning in. By the way, cheers. You know, um, I can see everyone oh, telling yeah. us what, what, they're, what they're drinking I, with. And, uh, awesome. Isn't she amazing? So then you got to this point of filling up with your commissions. You've got a wait list. Mm. And so then what point then did you start to, I think you started on Patreon, didn't you? You, 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 yes. you said on your, biz, your business plan, you had this desire to give back and teach because that's very within your. That was very much my business plan. And I did try other stuff. I did try art fairs. I did one and I've never done another. No. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> so, it's what you know what you put your focus on grows and yeah. I didn't like it I didn't enjoy it I didn't sell anything because I, I had a rubbish setup talked to a lot of people but that was about it um and the teaching stuff was always there in the back of my mind but I there was a point a part of me that was like I need to um I need to set a date but I also kind of need to get to a certain point in my um drawing and I think people started asking me and they were saying, you know, can, can you teach? Can you do workshops? And at the beginning, this was sort of 2017. And then it was like, I'm going to do, but at the moment I can't, it's not something that I've got time for. I'm booked out with my commissions and it just, it's not something that I feel ready to do. And then, and then <laughs> this is the most brilliant story. Then this woman messaged me and said hi I'm Vicky oh Vicky. I want you to come to London and do a workshop I've got a, uh, a um, an office downstairs in our apartment building and you can use that and I was like who the hell's this woman this is weird <laughs> and I replied back and I said oh thank you so much you're so nice but no I, d I don't think so this was like middle of 2018 um and um and she came back and she went no you're coming to London and I'll arrange it all and I was like oh my god this woman's like you know anyway we decided to do it in uh, November 2018 and I, got, I think I got 20 people or something like that and we were going to do two days one day drawing a dog and one day drawing a horse week before she messaged me and she was like so bad news, there's been a fire in the office, uh, you know, that we were going to use. And, you know, when your heart sinks and you think this has been a scam all along, it sounds dodgy, been yeah. really bad. She's like, don't worry, I've got a friend who's going to, you know, sort something out. Anyway, I arrived with all of this stuff. I'd, I'd, I'd kind of done all of the line arts. I'd done so much preparation. I arrived. She she lives on um, the Royal Victoria dock. So next to the Excel Centre one of her friends had had one of these beautiful buildings that they just vacated which I got for completely free she'd ordered all these tables and chairs in she'd ordered all of the food in we had the most amazing two days never met this woman in my life and we're now with with such good friends well she's my she's my gherkin isn't she yeah. she came to Nashville with us she's she's yeah. she's like a, the most amazing yes we can blame Vicky for everything <laughs> Shout out to Vicky, she's yeah, an amazing woman, yeah. and she just is so much part of of you know my life. Um, yeah. She's incredible, and she's such a, a you know she champions people. She's amazing, um, and that's kind of you know got got started with my teaching, and then I was like, right, I'm going to start a Patreon, yeah, and I chose the second of no, the first of February, no, second of February, 2019, and so unbeknownst to me kind of throughout 2018 I'd been sort of people saying are you going to start a Patreon and I was like yeah yeah and then all of a sudden it was like yeah I've got a date it's going to be the 2nd of Feb uh, blah 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 this is what I'm going to be doing oh these are the subjects that I've chosen and so there was probably about nine months of which I didn't realize but nine months of sort of like a marketing plan really um I decided I wanted 200 pounds extra um for my uh you know monthly that that would be really helpful and um so I opened my Patreon on the 2nd of Feb sort of expecting you know a few people to to drip in because Patreon can be quite tricky yeah I, I couldn't believe by the end of the first week I think I'd made 2,000 <laughs> and it just went it just went bonkers <laughs> absolutely bonkers um, and I think at the height of my patron, before I started the um, my, my Ignite membership, I had I think I had nearly 2000 members, but I was earning and this I, it's really important to talk about money yeah, it is. Earning up to 20,000 pounds a month, which was like ridiculous for me. Having had like in 2016, having had nothing, literally going to the supermarket and not being able to pay for my shopping, which was horrible to then yeah. having, you know, PayPal telling me I couldn't have all of this money because there was too much. There was too much money. <laughs> Twenty thousand. And at this point, what were you offering in your Patreon? What, what was the what was so the deal? Had, people signed oh, up? So my problem is I always offer too much. So I had a coaching tier which sold out like within minutes. Sold yeah. out. Wow. Uh, had a, a five pound tier which was like um, 
uh, focus stuff. And then I had a £10 here that was, uh, well, dollars, uh, that was, um, you know, like a full tutorial. And so every month on the first of the month, because Patreon worked then from the first of the month. Yeah. Flipping nightmare. Um, you know, I'd got, right, got to do this, got to do that. And it, it, um, it was actually quite stressful. I think Patreon is really stressful, I have to say. Mm -hmm. Um, it's quite a com it's a really confusing platform. Customer service is a little bit woeful, but it got me started, and you know it got me into that sort of teaching world. And I com continued with my commissions, um, and yeah, kind of kind of you know went from there. I have to say, when I got probably about six six months into Patreon, maybe a year into Patreon, I did start running ads. Mm -hmm. So I think I got myself an ads manager. Uh, probably after a year yeah around sort of the the yeah. end of 2019 2020 mark yeah. um uh you know I started running ads which made a big a big difference as well I think people get a bit scared of doing ads yeah yeah I think yeah. a lot of it is because they don't know who they're trying to target and I think that's yeah. the problem yeah and so for you though at that point before doing ads was it all organically you know these sales were from the people that were following you which is absolutely yeah. mind-blowing isn't it I mean, I might have, I might have done a, I might have boosted a post, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I was playing around with like, a boost. And, now I look at, and now I look at the complexity of Facebook ads and I'm like, what, what did I think was going to happen by boosting a post? Um, <laughs> but you know, I might, I might do that occasionally, but it was all, yeah. it was all sort of organic and, and going into groups and the way that I worded, the, the way that I actually wrote my content. Yeah. Um, you spent time really thinking about what you were saying. And so at what point did you, decide to come from patreon because you've got your own platform now haven't you it's the bonnie snowden academy yeah. and you've got your own platform what was the transition from from that platform to this one that you're so on 2020 so 2020 lovely lucy came and joined me because i decided that I, I needed some help with my social media so that's one of the biggest things i think for my success is that i am not scared of asking for help mm. And I, I I know my limits. I know what I'm really good at, and I really know what I'm rubbish at. Um, so I will ask for help all of the time. So Lucy came on uh, in 2020, and it was 20 the end of 2020 that I started thinking, do you know what? I'd really like my own platform. I'd like mm -hmm. to be able to look after people properly. Yeah. I'd like a much better experience because Patreon wasn't a great experience. So uh, 2021 um the ads manager who I had helping me she helped me put an advert together we decided we wanted to run a membership on Kajabi so we'd done all of our research and um we put an advert out I think it was on Upwork or something like that and we put like a brief and I got this amazing woman contact me she's called Lucy Hutchins Hunt and she sent me this a proposal and she was like, right, this this is what we didn't. I didn't know what it was going to be called at that point. I didn't know anything. She was like, right, we're going to start afresh. We're going to create you this amazing membership, blah, 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 blah. And I spent then probably from March 2021 till the launch date, which was the I think it was the 17th of September um, 2021, creating this platform, creating a whole new brand for it. Um being dropped headfirst into the land of online marketing and email marketing and funnels yeah. and yeah. automations. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, <laughs> um, and Lucy kind of came along, you know, and learned, she, she knew an awful lot more than I did, but kind of, you know, learned with me. And yeah. um, I just have to say at this point, Michelle, I, we can go for as long as you like. So I, my, yeah, uh, let's keep, yeah, yeah cause people yeah. are loving it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, who wants to carry on and hear yeah. Bonnie's story <laughs> <laughs> you know me um yeah and then we we what we did was we we called it a soft launch uh, uh yeah soft launch um so it wasn't I wasn't launching to sort of like a, an audience that wasn't already with me I was launching to a um a portion of my patreon account mm -hmm. and the, the portion of my patreon account was the segment I'd, I'd added a new segment that had critiques and i'd added like an art club into there and that was 20 pounds a month yeah and i and i said right we're coming away from patreon just this particular tier uh, and my coaching um uh, students we're, we're we're coming away 
I'm closing that. We're just going to migrate you all into the Ignite men membership. It's not going to cost you any more. All it means is that when you want your stuff, you log into here and it's going to be under my, I'm going to be looking after you now. Um, and, you know, that that was it. I can't tell you how complicated I made it. So <laughs> Lucy Hutchins had the, the, uh, the consultant. She was like, just tell everybody they're moving over. And I was like, yes, but some of them have just taken out a, an, an annual membership. So they've got like 10 months left. Some of them have got five months left. Some of them are still paying in dollars. Some of them are paying in pounds. So we set up all of these different sectors so that nobody missed out. Nobody missed out. And it was <laughs> We have always had this spreadsheets of um, this person paying in dollars but has three months left. So they had this particular coupon code. And we met, I'm, I was really adamant that I didn't want anybody to feel like I'd taken money yeah. off them or made yeah. money from them or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, oh, my goodness. I, I overcomplicate everything. And um, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Anyway, so they came. So that I think there were I think there were 200 people in that tier. I think there were 200 people in that tier. And I and I offered it to other patrons as well. And I said, you know, if you want to come along, we ended up with just over 700 in that wow. founding launch. Yeah. Um, and I think the majority of them are still still with me. And it was just, you know, when I was expecting 200 and it was more like a shift from here to here. Um, and then all of a sudden I've got people you know coming over and paying extra just to be in this in this amazing place and it was just it was fantastic it was absolutely oh, fantastic and it's your own platform and you built and it it's yours and of course, I hadn't thought about customer service mm. about, you know all of the emails that were going to come through <laughs> I hadn't thought about any of that and I was like Oh, uh, hang on. <laughs> you know, when you um, say that though, because someone said to me the other day that they're scared of growing because of that reason. But I just think you learn as you do, don't you? You get to that. There's no point like planning for if it's going to happen. I don't know. We've all got different opinions on this, but I just think get in it and then sort it out. And that's what I love about you. You kind of get on with it and then you'll find a solution because there's always um, a solution. Always yeah, a solution. Definitely. Yeah. I'm all for jumping in with, with both feet. <laughs> <laughs> at the deep end you know and, and and that's kind of how I teach as well you know mm -hmm. if you come and join me for the, we, we won't draw a pair on day one not going to do that yeah. we're going to draw a German shepherd yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you want to do it and you want to draw fur get in there and draw fur don't try and draw a pair yeah um, you know I mean there's this place is for pairs but not not in my membership <laughs> So your membership today, let's just talk because we were talking yeah. about money. I just want to celebrate Bonnie. She turned over one million in one year, <laughs> one million pounds in one year. And I love sharing this story because someone said to me the other day that there's no money in art. Mm -hmm. I was like, you need to, well, that's why I need to bring Bonnie in. <laughs> yeah. And so congratulations, because to go from where you were struggling you know, in that supermarket that day to now sitting with a business that you built, your vision, your skill that you took the time to learn, to grow that vision and ask for the help. You've now impacted the lives of thousands of people, yourself, your family. I mean, how does that feel? And, and well done. I mean, it's incredible. And what an inspiration to us all. Yes. It is amazing. I, I'm uh, anybody will tell you I'm not very good at celebrating my my <laughs> when we hit a goal. I'm I'm like yay! Right, what's next? <laughs> what's next? What can we do next? Where's my pencils? <laughs> yeah. And it's really funny because I have a very it's, I'm getting better, but I have a very peculiar relationship with money. Very peculiar. Um, but it's not. It's my it's my relationship with money, and it and it's and it's odd and. And even now, I feel very guilty when I have to. So I'm 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 really happy to pay for stuff for the business, you know, new computer here or new this or new that. Um, but when it comes to paying stuff, buying stuff for, for me personally, I have this like proper, you know, yeah. um, and and I'm getting over it. I'm definitely getting over it and I do and I do spend you know money on me but I much prefer to spend it on other people you know yeah. like my, my 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 gorgeous children we went away and we had like holiday of a lifetime and that was amazing yeah. that, felt, that felt brilliant because it was yeah. for them rather than well it yeah. was you know what I mean yeah um and yeah Donna, Donna no I didn't buy a Range Rover I bought a Land Rover 
people. <laughs> um, I've had that a year now. And that, again, that was like, I've got a vision board. Mm. So vision board, everything goes on the vision board, it sits in front of me. Everything that I'm kind of working towards, it's a daily reminder, an hourly reminder of what it is that I want. Yeah. And I think that for me was really, really important. Yeah, it's so, it, yeah. It's yeah. you know, I know some people think, oh, you know, but, but if it's there, smack bang in front of you or on your phone or something like that it's um it's a reminder and that mm. feeds into your you know your your well it's the reticular activating system and people hear me yeah. talk about this all the time the ras um yeah. and it's our filter and it filters in what's important and it filters out what's not um yeah. so i have uh i can't remember what we we're talking about now but i'm just going to talk mm. about um me and my uh belief system yeah so I have unwavering belief it's before, no. yeah. I, just, I don't, I, you know, I just believe that I just believe. Yeah. Um, and I always have this belief that uh, everything is going to work out. Everything's going to be OK. Yeah. And even when I mean, we, you know, I've had some really horrible times, some like pr properly horrible, the, the worst times you can, uh, you know, you, you can have. Mm -hmm. And we've and I've been through that as a family. Yeah. And um, but there's you know I could have gone one of two ways I could have gone like down into the deepest pits of despair um and and never surfaced again or I could just decide to crack on with life and make the best of of what I had um yeah. and that's what I do every day so you know life isn't rosy all of the time and things do happen and you're like oh. <sighs> right you know and then you have your five minutes of moaning and crying and whatever and yeah. then you're like right okay let's get this sorted out now and yeah. I've got a very can-do attitude to work I will always have um and it, it, I think it's that belief that you know just sort of have you noticed how I've completely pulled the conversation away from away me? from money <laughs> <laughs> we're celebrating Bonnie now she's moved it away I know but I understand because I, and we all have our money issues, don't we? And I, I guess uh, who here has money issues? You know, money. I do too. It's like uh, I'm stuttering now. It's like, <laughs> you know, I. It's stuff that is embedded from my childhood, definitely. And so I definitely struggle with even sharing the success that we've had. And sometimes I can't even like say the number out loud because I don't understand it. It's like, wow, how have we turned over that much? <laughs> and it's almost like it's fake and I have to keep checking my accounts and going, is this real? And I, I do sometimes wake up thinking, is this real? Um, but I, I love what you're saying about this belief system because I'm reading the book, Think and Grow Rich again at the moment. And I was reading it last night, in fact, and it was talking about this very topic around how, the brain is a muscle and the more that you can feed it this positivity and the belief and you train it on a daily basis and you keep doing that and I think that's why Bonnie and I talk with Mim big shout out to Mim um, and we're reinforcing all the time positive thoughts and and our vision and what we're going to do and we talk about it as it's happening and we're doing this and and it said in this book, you know, the more you do that, there isn't much room left for negativity or the doubt because you're filling it with I am doing this. And yeah. and it's a muscle, isn't it? Yeah. And so, yeah, totally get yeah. you. Yeah. Funnily enough, we, we were talking this morning about what I've got a, a live session next week for my uh, for my uh, membership. And it's, it's I have one a month. Well, I have lots of live months, uh, live sessions a month, but one of them is this business drop in. So in my membership, I don't actually teach how to sell art it's something that I've kind of thought about and I think I could create the most amazing course and membership but I don't think it's where my passion lies mm -hmm. I'm really happy to help people and you know give advice and and all of that kind of stuff but I don't think I'm you know and there's there's, there's amazing people like you who've already got those courses that I can go mm -hmm. oh, do you know what just Go and talk to Michelle, she'll tell you. Um, but I do have this business drop-in that I do each month. And we were talking about what I'm going to do next Thursday. And something that I'm really, really, really passionate about is being very careful about who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. I'm, I feel incredibly honoured to have groups where, you know, you, Mim, you know, the whole Stu McLaren mastermind filled with the most amazing entrepreneurs doing incredibly well and 
you know, it's usually, I'd probably say 99% of the time, incredibly positive. And that then, that vibe then affects me. And you, you'll have heard, you know, there's that little coaching model where attitude affects, my attitude affects my behavior, my behavior affects your attitude, your attitude affects your, and it just goes round and round and round. You know, you can, you can walk into a room and if there's a high vibe and everybody's like really positive, you're going to suck up that positive and you can't help but be positive but if you go into a room where everybody's doom and gloom or even if there's just one person who's doom and gloom and they've got quite a, a, a loud voice you tend to find yourself kind of you know having the, <laughs> the positivity sucked out of you yeah. um so we were I was thinking about this today and how I'm very careful about who I surround myself with so and this might sound quite um extreme but I'm very careful with my social media and who pops and I, I know we've talked about this in our, in our accountability group but if I'm seeing stuff that's bringing me down all of the time or if you know and, and how the algorithm works and of course if they then pop into something that's all doom and gloom you're going to get more doom and gloom <laughs> it's like our yeah. own algorithm isn't it it's like whatever yeah. you put in there you get more of um so yeah, yeah I, we have got our own algorithm that's a really good point actually yeah. Yeah. That's the, our reticular yeah. activating system is our yeah. own algorithm. Mm -hmm. And we can change that by what we feed into it. Yeah. Um, so I now, not, not I don't kind of unfollow people or unlike them or whatever, unless I'm like, no, I just can't be doing with you in my life. But mm -hmm. I'll snooze people. Um, you know, you'll find that some people are, are continually positive and even if they've had a challenge there's a positivity to the challenge. They're always kind of getting on and cracking on. And you'll find some people who are completely just everything's going wrong all of the time they may be talking about being ill all of the time I'm like I've got my own personal problems I don't want to hear about I know it's good to be authentic on social media but there's a time and a place for authentic and every single post is not being authentic that's just moaning and I don't want to be around accounts like that so I'm quite strict in what I see mm. and who pops up um because I want my life to be filled with that positive vibe. And it's not, people talk about toxic positivity and all of that stuff. Um, it's not that. It's it's who I choose to be around. I, do, I choose not to watch the news. Yeah. I've, 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 you know, and some people might say, well, you know, you're burying your head in the sand. You should know what's going on in the world. And I'm like, well, why? Because it's just going to make me feel miserable. It's going to make me feel sad. It's going to make me feel anxious. I, I look outside my window and that's my world. Mm. Yeah. sheep <laughs> yeah um, you know I can choose what works for you yeah yeah if yeah. I was constantly anxious and stressed and sad I couldn't mm. show up for my students on a regular basis mm. I couldn't you know and it's I feel really really strongly about that so that's the yeah. thing that I'm going to be talking about next week so if you yeah. if you're here now and you're my students that that was it you don't need to pop in next week. <laughs> Q&A as well. We're going to have Team Biscuits again next week. <laughs> be careful what you listen to, you know, what you watch, what you what you see. Be really careful because it it does affect, it affects our vibration. It really, really does. Yeah, I've been doing exactly that. And, and it's actually since, I've got to say a big massive thank you to Bonnie, actually, um, because I Bo Bonnie and I are in the same mastermind and Bonnie's been a massive support to me. And I have to say, since I've met you, um, and we've been chatting you've just opened my eyes to where I've been holding myself back and the possibilities and to just get you know dream bigger and sometimes we just get in our own little comfort zone and I think I was definitely in my comfort zone last year and also I think I was surrounded by a lot of negativity things going wrong in my life and I've made a concerted effort to do my vision boarding I'm reading books I you know just that thought process, I, I think Thadian said, how do you keep the self-belief? For me, it's about, it's, it's like a muscle and I'm constantly being aware of it. And if these negative thoughts come in, I either address them or I blow them away. And I literally do just like blow thoughts away because I know that it's going to affect that that energy inside of myself yeah. and there's no room for that stuff. It's like, yeah. and that's why I say to myself, there's no room for that because yeah. the more room, the more... Um, of the negative thoughts you're putting in your head there's less space then for the for the plans and the positivity and there is absolutely I mean Beth's just said there you know but but some people are having such a tough time I, I mm -hmm. completely get that and and all of the time people are having a really tough time 
um, you know, there's never a time in history where where someone isn't having a really tough time. I completely get that. But the problem with our um, uh, news, our media, they only focus on what's bad. They mm -hmm. only focus on the bad stuff. Um, unless you've got a no news day and then you'll maybe get something, you know. Um, but there's so much good that's going on in the world. And mm -hmm. I want to concentrate on the good. I, yeah. I, 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 you know, I give to charity. Um, I give an awful lot to charity. Um, you know, I, I support the charity near, near me, the Independent Domestic Abuse Services. I'll also give to um, to dog charities and, and you know, just giving. I'm, I give a lot to charity. But... I, I, I know that if I slip into the looking at everything that's going on in the world, yeah, I, I won't get out of bed. No. And also, because you're doing that, because you're taking care of yourself, you're able to impact more and more people. You're able to give to charity. And so, it, you know, yes. I, I think some people maybe feel they're being selfish, but you're not because you can give back and you can do more when well, you take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. the amazing thing about earning more money you can help more people yeah I just wanted to touch on on this Bonnie actually because I think a lot of people were saying I could see in the chat you know it's really daunting and it's really scary hearing like you've got now thousands of people and there's all these things but I, I love how you've designed your own life because you spend a lot of time still drawing and I just want to just reiterate that because it might sound like Bonnie's now drowning in funnels and all the things, but you've been really, really savvy around building a team around you so that you can spend every day drawing if that's what you choose to do, haven't you? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I I, I don't think I've worked as hard as I have since becoming a full-time artist. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've in well, I, ha I love every, every day. I love every day. But what I'm very, very, very aware of is that there are certain things that I don't do well. And if I tried to do all of the things there would be a, a ceiling that I would hit because you can't do you can't do the drawing and do all of the customer service and do all of the website and do all of the emails and do all of the you know even even for a business just just starting out that is a yeah. lot a lot a lot and I see so many artists burning out having to take time off because um they just they just can't do it all but the problem is I don't have this control problem Mm. I have the opposite. I want to give everything away. <laughs> <laughs> so you could just do the drawing. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to draw and I want to talk and I want to teach yeah. life. That's those yeah. are the three things that I do really well. And I make a great cup of tea. Um, th those are the things I do really, really well. But what I don't do well is making a website. I mean, I, and I, I'll do it, but it's a doesn't work properly. Um, you know, I'll I'll think I'm being organized and then I'm really not and things are everywhere. Um, and for me, it's about letting go of that control. And, you know, people talk about perfection. Yes, but I'm a perfectionist. I need to have everything perfect. You don't need to have everything perfect. If you wait for everything to be perfect, you won't get anything done. You need to start now. Get rid of the perfectionism, which I know is really hard for, for those who, you know, who, who, you know, do have perfectionism. Um, but ask for help because asking for help and just taking one thing, think of one thing that you either don't like or you know you're not very good at and try and get somebody to do that. And I know then the questions will come up. Yeah, but, you know, I can't afford it and blah, blah, blah. You can't afford not to mm. because, you know, if you give away that and you pay somebody X amount, you can do more of this and charge more for it. That's exactly what I've done in my business. Yeah. And the other thing that I've done, I think I've done really well, is get um, is have people who are completely opposite to me. Yeah. You know, so when Lucy came on board, she's the total opposite to me. She's super organised. Um, you know, everything's on spreadsheets, and and you know, she's she's really really organised. Um, and I'm just chaotic and just not on <laughs> yin and yang. Yeah. So she really compliments me and she yeah. can take all of that stuff and she does it really well. Mm, yeah. Whereas I'm rubbish at it. <laughs> yeah. You know. I think this is a block people have, isn't it? About that's that next step of hiring or just outsourcing things. And I think yeah. it is definitely something that um 
that people get in their own way about and it's that you know for all all reasons of like commitment and like you say um I, I could just do this myself and save the money but you don't realize that but you're buying back time and by paying somebody um 40 pounds to just like I don't know change your website or something could be buying you could take you six hours to do that where it's going to take someone else an hour to do and yeah, yeah. But the thing is you you get rid of the stress and the anxiety that that job gives you so the one yeah. thing the first thing I gave away was um <laughs> was shipping my portraits or, or parceling them up I don't know why but for some reason I had this real hatred <laughs> Of parceling my portrait, I absolutely hate. You know, you see these videos of other artists, and they're all wrapping it up and you yeah, little you know, signature. These and all things. I've got, I've got sellotape everywhere. I can't <laughs> find it. End. It's got everything's going <laughs> flying. You know, the dog will come and jump on it. It just wasn't a happy process for me. So as soon as I could get rid of that and pay, I don't know, pay somebody ten quid to wrap three parcels. Yeah, that saved my mental health. <laughs> Yeah. How many hours of being stressed and worrying about it? You know, yeah. I put stuff off. I put parceling things up off because yeah. I was so like, oh, I just hate it. I don't know why. Um, and that then gives me space to do what I'm good at so I could, you know, fit some more hours and stuff into my drawing. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what I do really well. But I do understand that some people find it quite difficult, um, you know, to delegate. Delegate it is really hard. And to um, let go. Mm. Yeah, you just let go. And you've got to see it in a different way. So if if you're looking at something and your thoughts are always, this is why I can't do it, try to see it from a, a slightly different perspective. You know, yeah. actually, this is going to help me do X, Y, Z if I don't do this, or this could help somebody, you know, I, if I gave somebody £10 to do three parcels, that's going to make a massive impact on, on them. Um, you know, it, it's it's all it's looking at things in a different way. Um, yeah. 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 So if you could give yourself yeah. advice back to your younger self, what would that advice be? Don't do anything differently. Just 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 live your life as it comes up and make the most out of it and be as happy as you can. Trust the process. Yeah. Trust the process. Yeah. Love yeah. That. yeah. <laughs> And obviously, this is the Your Art Matters show. So why does why does art matter, Bonnie? Oh, goodness. Well, so creativity, any kind of, um, you know, whether it's painting, drawing, doodling, whatever it is, what that does is it has the most amazing effect on the inside of you. Um, so it allows you to disappear. So many people have struggles in life. And it allows you to just disappear. And, and you do, you know, even if it's just doing, we've been doing Zen tangles and stuff like that. Even if it's just like a little doodle for five minutes, that's five minutes of clear mind, a bit of space to breathe and all of the, you know, whatever's going on in your life just, just disappears. And that I think is one of the most important things that you can do for yourself yeah it's that little yeah. bit of space yeah oh bonnie thank you so much it's been absolutely amazing oh. speaking with you tell everybody where because I, I could see there's lots of people saying they wanted to join your academy we've got lots of people who like to draw uh, with colored pencils so um we'll put all the links below we'll get the links from bonnie if you want to sign up for the academy we'll put the link below but just let everybody know where they can find you you're on instagram aren't you on instagram on facebook so i'm on tiktok <laughs> I don't know what you're dancing, I promise. Um, so it's Bonnie Snowden Academy. Just make sure you spell my name right. It's Bonnie with a Y, Snowden with an O N. Um, and you can find me on um Bonnie Snowden Um and I've got a really fun week coming up in May. You might oh, yes, uh, pencil. yeah, colour pencil week. I'm gonna teach you to draw in seven days. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, draw definitely, we'll, we'll drop the links below that as well if you want yeah. to join that. Yeah, we're drawing an otter. that's what we're doing. We're drawing an otter. I'm really excited about the little otter, and he's like got little fingers. It's going to be so, so cute. cute. <laughs> um, yes, so you can you can find me there, and you can sign up there as well. 
Fantastic. Hasn't this been amazing, everyone? Thank you to everyone who tuned in live. It's been incredible to have you all here, part of the conversation. If you're listening to the replay, if you want to join in with the conversation, we'll put the links below this episode so you can go and see the chat and see what everyone else was talking about as we were doing this episode together. But I just want to say a massive thank you for being in my life, Bonnie. Thank oh. you for being so open and sharing. I've just seen the comment, the chat has been flooded with so many people saying how helpful it's been for you to break your journey down. So we really do appreciate you doing that because there's not many people that are so open in the art space. People can be really like, you know, don't want to share. So you are an incredible inspiration to us. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Michelle. And thank you for being in my life. I know a couple of weeks ago I ended up in tears on our little chat because I was telling you I loved you so much. <laughs> we did a little moment and we like, oh, I love you. <laughs> um, but you know, well, and that's what everybody needs. They need a Michelle, a, a Mim, a, a, a Vicky. They need somebody like that in their life who can, you know, yeah. just just keep keep you keep you keeping on. And it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye. <laughs>